Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly, I guess, a crimson master today, because uh, today we, we were going to be carrying on with our ongoing uh, Witcher campaign, but unfortunately we were down quite a few players today. Uh, so what we've elected to do is we are taking out... Um, Simon Washburn's a very cool old school Crimson Blades. My camera's backwards here, but this is the Crimson Blades. This is the version you can get through um, Lulu. Uh, he's got all his games on there that you can print for, for actually a pretty reasonable price. It's not a very big one. Um, what this game is, is a... Uh, if you're not familiar with his name or with the name of the game, you may be more familiar with his one of his other games, uh, Barbarians of Lemuria. Uh, that game I've, I've seen a lot of chat about, and I got that, and I got this uh, recently, and then this is the one that, because I'm a fucking contrarian, and I like, you know, um, uh, the unfound gems, uh, I read this one, and it seemed like it's got some really interesting ideas, so I th asked the James and Robert if we wanted to try out a new game today, and here we are! So, there is, let me first introduce you to the uh, Crimson Bladesman who will be joining me today. We've got Robert... Hello. And James. Hello. I'm playing somebody. I don't, haven't met them yet. <laughs> uh, we are using Roll20 in this because we use Roll20 for all of our games, but there is no character sheet for uh, for this in Roll20 at the time of recording, but I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, I'm also going to be using one house rule in this uh, because I think we should, the game is so streamlined, we should have enough time to, to be able to actually play as well. So, guys, um, the game is, I guess with that introduction, let's dive in. Um, the game is built on the bones of the OGL, uh, but it it changes very quickly. The game uses only D6s uh, for everything. Uh, and where while you do uh, have the standard array of uh, stats, um, the modifiers are closer to what you see in Kevin Crawford's games, where... The 18 gives you a plus two, at 14 to 17 gives you plus one, and then you, your negative modifiers don't start until a seven. So it's a much narrower band. Task resolution is basically you're rolling a six and looking for a five or higher for most things. So kind of like free leagues games. And the uh, attacks are against the uh, same thing, a, uh, a difficulty class, usually a three or a four, depending on what armor and what other modifiers the characters may have. Damage reduction is a thing in this. And the, broadly speaking, the way attacks work, your hit dice serve not only to determine what your hit points are, it's also what you use to attack. So if you happen to have, say, three hit dice uh, and you're fighting, Depending on what kind of weapon you're using, you can roll all of those and split them amongst part amongst the different people, uh, targets of that are available, or you can all focus on one. A medium weapon can be used to spread around, so you can apply your hit dice to each. You roll all of your hit dice, and then depending on, like, if you assign one to one target and that one is a hit, you hit that target and you roll damage. If you roll two hits on another target, uh, you would roll two damage, two instances of damage from it. And then with a, a heavy weapon, like a longsword or a halberd or whatever else, uh, you actually stack the damage. There are certain class mod abilities that allow you to, you know, treat certain weapons as other weapons. And where that comes in value is because DR is a thing in the game, for some of the more powerful adversaries, you're going to need to hit a real big punch in order to get through. Um, that's the game in a nutshell. The, the spells are going to be recognizable as, you know, what you play, uh, what you see in other old school games. Oh, your sidekick's departing. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, and uh, otherwise, and the, the classes are going to be quite recognizable uh, as well. One of the... Um, uh, and these are from, I should say, from the uh, basic uh, for form of like the B, either the uh, BX or the uh, Beckme versions of D&D. Uh, &D. Um, the classes, well, let's get, okay, so the classes are going to be likewise recognizable. Uh, Barbarian, Fighter, uh, Griot, which is the kind of replacement for the Bard, uh, Thief, Mountebank, Sorcerer, Wayfarer, which is kind of a monk, 
and the Dendrolesi. The Dendrolesi are the Airsats Meldavonians. The game, as you can tell from the cover, takes a lot of inspiration from the Elric stories, uh, and that is very much, the, even the setting itself. Let me see, uh, did I put the map out here? I didn't yet, hold up. I'll show you, this is what the, the Crimson Lands themselves, where the game is, or what the game offers up as one setting for you. Let's see here, Crimson Lands. Uh, it's very much a, you know, the same type of world. The Dendrolissi used to cover, you know, uh, have an empire that covered a much, much bigger uh, world, and then they've just over time have lost their influence and degenerated and whatever. The Dendrolissi mechanically play very much like uh, old school uh, elves in the sense that they're kind of fighter mages, but one of the differences with the Dendrolissi is that uh, they separate, the game separates out summoning from spellcasting. So summoning demons, summoning elementals, summoning uh, undead is very much part of this. And the Dendrolissi start with that and gain spells as they get a higher level. Armor uh, can be worn by anybody. So you can play a sorcerer cruising around in plate mail armor if you so choose. Um, yeah, that's, that's the game in a nutshell. So what we needed to do is uh, we talked before we went uh, live about... Um, making a third level character and making a first level character each. Uh, do you want to start with a first level character each or a third level character each? Um, maybe a first level and then okay. look up. Um, um, but Kev, I had a quick question. When you were talking about the um, the way the rules work, you were saying D6s primarily, yeah. but could you, are there two different versions of the game? Because mine says Crimson Blades D20 and the core system is all about D20. Oh, hold up here. Am I set the... Oh, oh yeah, I said you the wrong one. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, it's the D... I, I, was, I, was, I was a little confused wondering if... Like, I know he released... Yeah, that's... The thing about this game is... Let's see here. I want the D8 version. Come on. <laughs> Come on, let's give oh. some D12 some love here. Oh, D12s, yes, the best no, no, day no. of them all. D14, looks like they make those. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got uh, a D12 set of... is great dice. But... Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Okay, what is it called here? Yeah, actually, I haven't looked at the D20 version. Uh, I got the D 2D6 version in print. Okay. Uh, so, let's see here. Crimson, where is it? I mean, the D twenty looks pretty much like you would expect. Uh, yeah, I just I like the D six version quite yeah. a bit, just because it's got some very inventive. Um... Oh no, I'm perfectly happy to do that. I'm just saying that that's what. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here, crimson. Uh, ah, there it is. Okay. Where are you, my friend? There we go. Okay, coming. So, um, the while I'm getting that together, the thing you're gonna, uh, first thing I see you guys will, will need to decide is what um, character class uh, you wanna play. One of the neat things uh, with the game as well is um, that you can, uh, sorcerers, and uh, you have just like in you know classic D and D, you have prepared spells that you can have, uh, that you have, but you also have access to your grimoire and you spend, it's 1d3 rounds flipping through the grimoire to find the spell. You can cast any of the spells out of your grimoire as well. And at the start of the game, what you do is you look at the, the first level spells and you make an intelligence roll for every single one of them. And every one that you succeed on, you have that in your grimoire. So you have an, a lot more versatility as a spellcaster. You're still, you know, brittle as shit, but you uh, you have a lot more versatility with it. Um, and then that continues on. So when you when you gain access to second level spells, you go through that whole list and see what's in your grimoire. So it makes for uh, it's an interesting uh, take because the I think it makes for a lot more uh, versatile um, spellcasters. So uh, mm -hmm. anyway, the. Uh, and then the uh, the Dendrolissi obviously are a, a pretty you know classic part of the uh, uh, the setting uh, only because whoop, there we go pretty heavily inspired by a certain 
blind, you know, albino, uh, what do you call it, uh, Melnibonian. All right, so, uh, there we go. you got the D6 version now? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So what uh, what class would you guys like to make for your, your first characters? Um, so first level, huh? Um, maybe. Maybe the first level guy will be a little bit more straightforward. Um, so again, the class are barbarian, uh, fighter, griot, thief, mountebank, sorcerer, wayfarer, and dendrolessi. Okay. Uh, what's a mountebank? A rogue. Ma mountebank is sort of like a quasi. It's a. Um, it's a bit like a rogue, so it's got one of the classic rogue abilities of being able to use scrolls to cast magic. But a lot of their skills are focused around like um, contacts or detecting illusions, um, disguise, sleight of, uh, sleight of hand. They're con men, kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the neat thing with the game is a lot of the classes have um, different skills, and then what you do when you make your character is you assign uh, a certain number as primary, a certain number as secondary, a certain number as tertiary, and depending on your level, it'll tell you how many d6s you roll when you're testing for that. Okay. Uh, it's not between 20 this arrived. And if you guys can't decide, you can always roll randomly. Sure. Uh, but, sorry, I'm having an issue with the. Okay, that's the D. Uh, the D6 one should be the BBG. There we go. Got it. Got it. And does this one have less character classes than the other one, maybe? Because I was. I don't think so. Really, okay. Barbarian, fighter. I'll open up my PDF version here yeah. just to be sure. Yeah. Just opening this up. So yeah, it's the a kind little of, bit like a bard. A yeah. little like a bard, but they also ha um, have uh, summoning. They can summon knowledge okay. demons. Ah. Which just sounds a lot more badass than cramming. Yeah. Um, just checking out one of this Creo depends. That's a Wayfarer. What's a Wayfarer? Wayfarer is like a kind of like the monk. It's the okay. Crimson uh, Blades version of the monk. Yep. Uh, so um, what do you guys think? I think I'm gonna. For my first level, I think I might just go with unless uh, unless James, you have an eye on a barbarian. I want something that's fairly simple to start. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, yeah, you go with that. I'll go with I'll go with the thief. Thief, okay. nice. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing you do, guys, is uh, you're going to roll three d six seven times. Okay. And put that in our notes, probably. Uh, yeah, this one, you're, um, you can put in your notes if you'd like. Uh, okay. You can write, a, you know, use scratch paper to write down those. Or you, I mean, roll them in chat. Uh, yep. Yeah, and yeah. then... Put them anywhere I want. Okay. Uh, no, then what you do is you take six of those results, and then you assign them wherever you like it for the six stats. Okay. Right. So 3d6 times seven. Oh, yeah. 3d6. 3d6 times seven might roll everything all at once. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying to... Okay. Two, sorry, and then three, four, five. Let's see. Okay. One, two, three, three, four. I need to roll one more. Ooh, Eighteen. Like Beautiful. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. And 17. <laughs> nice, guys. Yeah. Nine, so that's six, one more. 
Okay. So then uh, drop your lowest one and then assign the other six. If you want to see what the modifiers are, again, it's on page six. Yeah. I didn't see any of you guys roll anything seven or less, so you're not suffering any yeah. modif any penalties to anything. Other than the 18, everything is between nine and 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the things that are, neither of you guys are, um, what do you call it? Uh, none of you guys are playing spellcaster types, so you don't need to worry about uh, your intelligence modifier for spells or summoning or anything like that. But uh, charisma is an important stat for barbarians for the number of beasts you can have. Mm. 8 to 13, though, gives you 4, and the 18 would only give you 8. Yeah. Uh, I eight beasts were pretty damn cool, but I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure I want to keep track of eight beasts plus two uh, two characters. <laughs> Which um, so then assign those uh, using your notepad. Assign those wherever you want for your stats. Sure, hold on. The only thing uh, barbarians require is a con of nine or higher, and okay. the thieves. And you say, you Dexum, said, um, nine or higher. Let's see, hold on. I'm just reading to a way. There's damage. Okay, that gives damage. Um, there we go. Yeah, so it'll be, uh, is it very much like, uh, classic D&D? &D? You get strength okay. gives you a bonus to melee and damage. But hit the, uh, your hit dice effect. Your roll to hit in combat comes from Dex. Okay. You said something about your hit dice do something when you're, um, Attacking multiple. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. You don't need to worry about that right now. Okay. But I'm just, I just wonder, just would Constitution affect that? Uh, no, that not to hurt. hit. Okay. Uh, hit points or hit dice in this game do double duty to help generate okay. your hit points and yep. to generate your, um, All right. what do you call it, to uh, right. measure how many attacks you can make in a round. Okay. So what's going to happen here is. So, and I have to have at least nine in con, which is fine yep. because I have. And a thief needs at least that. a nine in dex. Otherwise, assign them strength dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, wherever you like. And how did you, uh, so you, James, you got a 17. Oh, you got a 14 as well. Nice. He's got at least two modifiers that are plus one. Yep. Oh, idiot. Okay. All right. Oop. Let's get rid of that first line. Okay. Okay, done that. So that's... All right, so you can assume you get your max hit points. So for you, it's a D6 plus one. So you have seven hit points there, James, uh, modified by your con. And uh, Robert, you start with plus four. So you have 10 hit points at first okay. level. In this game, what you do is you roll, you like you re-roll every time you gain a new hit dice. You re-roll your hit points, and then mm -hmm. if it's less than uh, you, what your current hit points are, you just stay at your current amount. Mm -hmm. okay. You are proficient in. Let's see here. Uh, okay, so nice. All right, so then each of you guys have. A bunch of skills to choose from. You have an automatic ability, uh, Robert. Your barbarian has that rage. Mm -hmm. So once per day, you can go into a rage. You receive a bonus hit dice, hit points as well as to hit. So you'll gain extra hit points uh, at that. And a plus two bonus on will saves. And it lasts 1d3 plus your level. If a rage continues after all the enemies are defeated, there is a chance that you'll continue to attack the nearest person. <laughs> yep. Then uh, what you have is you have 
you'll see on page 12, there are six skills listed there, or six abilities. Climb, Beast Mastery, Survival, Stealth, uh, and, tra oh, five, and Track. Why does it say six? Hold on, am I missing one? Oh, and Sixth Sense. Nice. So then what you do is you choose two of them for each category. And the way this works, Robert, is you'll see under your the table on page 11, it tells you how many dice you roll for when you're using a primary ability, how many you roll for a secondary, and how many you roll for a tertiary. Okay. As, this is the same for the thief as well, too. The way that task resolution works in this is you roll D, a number of D6s and you take the best roll. So, um, yeah, the, at this level, it doesn't. It's not a huge difference, but as you gain levels, you see differences between those. So you get up to like four d6 later on. So you choose two of them to be primary, two of them to be secondary, and two of them to be tertiary. Uh, the thief always gets the sneak attack, and then your six are. Uh, climb, locks, find, sounds, stealth, and traps. Right, so I pick the rank those, and then the other one I just get, but... You get all... Uh, yeah, or... Sneak attack, you always get. All thieves get that. And then what you get to choose, just like the barbarian, you choose two to be primary, two to be secondary, two to be tertiary, and that tells us how many D6s okay. you roll when you're testing it. So I've got seven in total. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Seven abilities so, in total. One of them is already set, and then the other ones you just you uh, prioritize. Yeah, primary, secondary. So you get all of those. You just, to, you just have to um, divvy them up between. Yeah, you just got to prioritize them, and okay, and it's really like the. the it matters more as you get higher levels uh, because then there's a difference between secondary and primary. Right now, there's you're rolling the same thing for primary and secondary. Okay, got it. And then you're, uh, uh, if you have ability modifiers, that also goes into the roll. Yep. Let's see, survival always seems like a good thing in a cat room. Uh... <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea. <laughs> All right. Um... Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's see. So primary. <laughs> Okay. I really need to get a double monitor. Um, <laughs> well, I could do it, but then we'd be hearing my kid. Uh, uh, let's see. So you're a thief. Um, I bet you can uh, track like this. Six cents seems pretty good. Especially if you have a DM that likes that sort of thing to set you off. I'm... Not that I'm at all. Um, Thinking about the DM when I'm <laughs> not uh, a bad idea. So do I have? Let's see here. If there's ever any boating skills, I always put those dead last because if we're on a boat, we aren't going to be there long. <laughs> I actually got a pretty cool supplement for uh, naval combat and naval, you know, maneuvers for PF2. Okay. Uh. Uh, was that a, an official one or a, a uh, th party? through their Pathfinder Infinite thing? I think I've got. All right. Yeah, let me show you. It's while oh, we're getting ready here. I think I got it here. Yeah, it's called Smoke and Sail Naval Warfare. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. It builds on the. Um, uh, Vehicle rules out of the game mastery guide, but then also odds uh, so like lots of rules for customizing your ship and stuff like that. So I have no idea. I, I haven't uh, taken a deep dive into it, uh, but it looked good enough on on first pass to justify getting it uh, bound or printed and bound. Um, okay. Plus, who doesn't want to have uh, you know magic um, flags <laughs> as your you know um, treasure that you get. And climb, okay. Okay, all set. Okay, all right. Uh, so, 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 um, if <clears throat> excuse me, 
if your characters are, have, if you made your selections for your skills, and uh, we got mm -hmm. your stats down, then the last thing is uh, gear. What kind of gear are you carrying? Uh, so, let's see here. What it says. Uh, I saw mm -hmm. barbarians. You make your armor. Okay. I make mine of the yeah, tears so, of my enemies. Out of cows. Uh, <laughs> armor no, can be made from a vast range of different materials, such as woven plant fiber, wood, bone, or tusk plates, or scales laced together, or even the shells of animals and monsters carved into helmets, shields, and breastplates. Mm -hmm. Most of these are considerably less durable than mail and plate armor. I would assume armor made of the tears of my enemy would be very, very uh, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> light. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, starting gold very is three d six multiplied by ten. Okay. And uh, equipment is on page twenty six. Weapons are extremely simplified in this. Uh, it is really just it's a medium weapon or it's a large weapon. I uh, or a heavy weapon. At some point, I think in some iteration of these rules, there was light weapons because the um, the thief makes reference to light weapons being able to mm -hmm. use light weapons as heavy weapons and, and so forth. Uh, I have not been able to find where those rules are in the in the current version of them, so I don't know what that's supposed to do. But also, like at a certain level, thieves are able to pick up pretty much anything and use it as a heavy weapon. So mm -hmm. you can pick up like a fork and try and you know stab an <laughs> ogre in the eye, which is pretty nice. badass. Weapons yep. uh, and armor on page are on pages twenty eight and twenty nine. Otherwise, and I can afford a camel. <laughs> and I, in my um, armor, basically the cost is on the, is underneath the barbarian. Yes, it is. Yours uh, is cheaper. Wait, okay, okay, but that was good. Okay, exactly. But probably oh, this is another thing I like about this is uh, the um, you'll note that encumbered system. It is a listing of things. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and if you want to know how encumbered uh, you are, you take a look at page thirty, and mm -hmm. tells you how many things you're carrying. That tells okay. you what your speed is. Okay. So the more shit you carry, the uh, slower you go. And it's like, um, what do you call it? Um, stars without number, uh, where mm -hmm. your advancement is based on the number of sessions you play. So you play one session, you know, one adventure, you gain a level. You play okay. another adventure, you gain up to third level, and then it takes you, it slows down after that, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, a chance of that, like low, to experience the low level play, but you, you don't dally at that level for a really long time. Okay. Um, do not adjust the DC for wearing these types of armor. The capability modifiers do apply. But what about? Looks like Turtle Shell Breastplate has a DC minus one. Uh, DC minus one. Yes. So that means uh, for any physical tests, like it's it's the armor penalty that you see in okay. um, the modern versions of D and D. So if you're trying to sneak or stealth or yeah. whatever else. You okay, will suffer that if, penalty. Okay. Barbarian, but it says do not adjust the DC for wearing these types of armor. Uh, so that's an ability modifier. Or no. Uh, the, the, the very last sentence before Barbarian Oh, armor, sorry, so, sorry. I'm looking at two different things here. Yeah, um, so yeah. yeah sorry. The, what the DC is is the difficulty. So because uh, damage reduction and chance to hit are two separate things in the game, yep. the DC yep. is, your dam is your defense class. It's, it's effectively yep. your armor class. Yeah. So you ignore that penalty, but you, um, uh, you know what? I might have said times 10. I actually don't think you multiply your gold by 10. Uh, I think you do. Uh, Let's see here. I saw it. Oh, yeah, multiply by 10. Nope, ignore me. Yeah. Um, yes, so the penalty is for the stats. The DC is like plate mail. You're a lot easier to hit in plate mail, but you're a lot harder to harm in plate mail. Okay. But I guess I'm just looking at the table. So when it says they do not adjust their DC for wearing these types of armor. Yeah. Um, and then under turtle shell breastplate, it says DC minus one. Right. So that's if anyone else is wearing it. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it counts as three things. Eh, what the hell? We'll do it. We killed a massive uh, zombie turtle. I can tell you where, let's see here, where the penalties, once you're carrying six things or more, that's when you start slowing yeah. down. Okay. Oh, he's not going to carry much Oh, more. but that's also modified by strength, it looks like. 
Do you have a strength modifier? Did you put your 18 in strength? Mm. No, no, I put it in dex. Oh, Better interesting. Chance. Okay. Better chance to hit things. And, and your DC, I think your, your damage class is, or uh, defense class yeah. is modified by dex, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 that's cool. Okay, I'm confused on the weapons, so there's only two kinds of weapons, effectively. Yeah. Medium and heavy. Yep. And I can choose whether it costs one or 30 GP. <laughs> Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Figure there's a midpoint. Take the midpoint for the cost of stuff. I don't know why it, was, uh, it's listed that way. <laughs> that, that's really old school where it's like uh, pretty much all the weapons did 1d6 and it was just about the flavor. <laughs> well, and the thing is, it's this puts the focus on the characters. Yes. You'll you'll yes. see where, like, it's it's the, um, it's how, uh, how the characters perform is really the, uh, you know, the big... Uh, difference here so because um, you're like a chance to hit uh, are really based on your um, how many hits ice you have yep. uh, okay so let's it's, see uh, what, I gotta... what kind of weapon are you carrying there Robert uh, I'm about to find out let's see Pedro's a sound about 30 Something. About page 30, yeah, it's either 28 or 29. Okay. No one summoned any demons. We don't need to talk about that. No. Not until our third level characters. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder oh, what I can do in the interim. Yeah, under 30 gold. So, uh, that seems right for um, min maxers. Yeah, I know. Like, this is not the kind of game for that kind of player. No. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, he is going to take. Um, okay. Um, he's just going to go with a solid spear. Okay. Maybe, maybe. So, heavy weapons, what's the. Hold on. Let me see. Do slower, more powerful ball at close. Hold on. Uh, he's successful his own. Medium. What's your question, Robert? Oh, I was just looking at the differences between medium and heavier. Um, so heavy really weapons. what it boils down to is uh, what that heavy attacks, you can stack your hit dice mm -hmm. and try and uh, uh, have the, the stack damage against one target before applying DR. Yep. Medium attacks. Like you have to if it's, if it's a heavy. It looks like you have to if it's a heavy. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, medium you can medium. spread amongst. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at a great spear, but no, he's just going to do a spear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you're using multiple weapons, too, you can carry a weapon in each hand. It gives you an extra hit dice to your attacks, but it gives you minus one to hit. Yeah. Maybe I'll take a spear and an axe so we can throw it. Okay. It's what about uh, your guy there? Or your character, at least, uh, James? I'm just trying to figure the DC. What's it? I'm just scrolling through. So it starts at three. More. And Three. it's modified okay. by your dexterity. So if you do you have a dex modifier? All right. Okay, cool. Very good. So it's a DC four. So I've got plus two, right? Because of 17. Okay. Oh, 17 gives you plus one. Oh, okay. Plus 18, one. I think, is the where is the only where you get plus two. Okay, so I'm plus I'm four. Yeah. So it'd be four. And then does your class give you a DC bonus? Uh, I think at later levels. Oh, later levels, okay. Okay. And then, uh, we're gonna... Okay, does everyone have their gear and such? Um, for what weapons are there? Is there any other gear that we need to get? Like, yeah, just on paying the uh, I I think we can assume... Let me see if I've got something... Uh, here. You know what? Let's do this. Um, I, let's say that you're, you know, as classic, um, uh, sword and sorcery characters, you're going to be your weapons and, you know, an empty water skin, and that's kind of it. Okay. That's what you're I'm a 10 foot pole. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, let's see here. 
So we'll get a Barbarian, and we've got a, just for ease of reference, look and see what I've got here. What do you picture your thief looking like, uh, James? Here. Robert, how does that work for a token? Uh, oh, looks fine to me. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here if I got a rogue. <laughs> so, I like the swagger. How does that work for uh, <laughs> for you, James? Yep, sounds good. Okay. Uh, what are your respective hit points? Uh, oh, 10, I believe. Yeah, 10 for you, okay. And 7 for me. 7 for you, okay. Let's do this here. 15, 40. Do you have a name for 55, your guy? 65, 65. Mm. Um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Rudolph. Let's go with that. <laughs> Rudolph, love it. Uh, uh, seven hit points for you, James. Yep, please. Okay. Let's go with, um, let's go with Kalgem. K A L G E M. Okay. Oop. On oh, position for Z bars. There we go. All right, so roll off and Kalgan, you said? Uh, Kal uh, Kalgem with an M on the end. Oh, Kalgem like, with an M. Like, like Muser, yeah. Like Muser, they go, yeah, <laughs> say like Mother, yeah. but you're smart, yeah. always be branding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so we got Kalgem and we got Rudolph. Now, you may be asking, guys, uh, Kev, what is that uh, green bar above there? Well, that's gonna be, it would not be a game on the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel without already house ruling it. Um, I've got a rule in mind for Astonishing Fortune. So, Sanjay Fortune is going to play very similar to uh, the way that uh, it does in our, um, blah, 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 what do you call it, um, old Hyperborea game. So, what you'll get is uh, you have one um, Astonishing Fortune dice. Uh, it refreshes at the start of each session. Uh, and then what you do, you can use it to re-roll the number. Uh, you can use it to not die. And that's kind of it. Or like re-roll dice, so similar to what we use for other things. But then, when you use it, you roll the dice, and if you roll equal to or less the number of times you've used Astonishing Fortune this round, it's gone for the rest of the session. Mm -hmm. If not, you get to draw on it again. And then the second okay. time you do that, you roll again on a, D, on a two or a one on the second time, it's gone mm -hmm. until the start of the next session. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you guys have that, and my thought was was it would be uh, equal to your level divided by two rounding up. So as you okay. get more powerful, you'll get more, you'll be able to play with more things. Mm -hmm. Gives mm -hmm. you that little bit of cushion for uh, us playing in the dangerous uh, mode. Now, before we make your third level characters, let's try and kill these guys. Okay. To see how the combat system works out here. So here we are. Oh, okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about your heroes, though. How do you think these two reprobates fell in together? And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about each of your reprobates? Um, my uh, Kalgum decided that he was tired of of basically going out and killing uh, the low level whatevers that happened to be plaguing his tribe, um, and you know he was made for better things, and um, he wanted to go out and. First of all, he wanted to go out and see a city. You know, he heard about those things. Maybe that's where he fell in with um, with uh, Rudolph. Um, you know, big big sweat and big barbarian just wandering around, looking lost. Who knows? Maybe uh, Rudolph attempted to uh, pick his pocket and discovered that barbarians don't have very much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, James? Oh well, Rudolph. Uh, yep, making his way. Uh, throughout, a light, a light-hearted view of the world, and but has always found that it's useful to have a large friend. <laughs> Never a bad Sometimes thing. Sometimes people don't appreciate his humor. 
<laughs> All his secret. And, and at least Cogum doesn't understand this humor, so it's like he doesn't get offended. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a quick uh, map here. Let's see if we can. Uh, 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 uh. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Do I have a desert ruins thing? I'm sure I do. Kev from another time, I'm sure, made an impulse by desert lands. Here we go. Look at that. Okay, let's do. Woo. Send that to the map layer. Let's put a little grid on here. There we go. And so I think, I think, I think, guys. Uh, you have been. Oh, sorry, what's that, Robert? The music's getting me going. I'm ready to attack something. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to resize this map, make it a little bigger for us to play on. So this is the um, terrain through which you guys have been traveling for a couple of days. Um, this is going to be in the Crimson Land setting. There's our map here. This would be, I think, one of the lands. There is a little uh, guest here at the back of the book uh, that just gives you, you know, like very brief descriptions of uh, a couple of different lands to get you, you know, give you a place to play in. I think it's in um, uh, Nenefar. So what it says about Nenefar is, uh, you guys are fucked. That's weird. <laughs> Why does it say that in the book? Nenefar, uh, so Nenefar is a hot and dry so it is hot and dry in the northern regions, getting more arid further south until the Sutral Desert begins. The desert stretches south for hundreds of miles, far beyond the range of several nomadic tribes that dwell there. The coastal and river delta regions have, are, have a surprisingly fertile soil, however. So this is uh, down, I guess, somewhere in here. What do you think brought you guys down here? Was it uh, riches? Was it fortune? All I know is you've pissed off one of the desert tribes of uh, Nenufar, and you guys are currently on the run from one of them. How did you find yourself here, and who is the one to blame for those <laughs> for those tribesmen? Uh, I'd assume we had to run away from, let's say, Valon to get away from somebody who, again, had a sorely lacking sense of humor. <laughs> so we came to Nenufar, and then again, they proved to be equally disappointed. Okay. <laughs> so you've been on, I think you're just uh, finishing off the last gasp of your, you know, your your drink um, uh, as you're walking along here. It's it, This is a reflector. I don't think you're seeing these ruins, but to give you a sense of how desolate this stuff is. And that's when... Um, why don't you each give us, uh, does, I guess, first off, do either of your classes give you a spot or a seek or a, kind of a C, you know, kind of ability? Uh, got find? Uh, yeah. Let me see what find is. Let me get my skills Good up. finding hidden things. Yeah. I'll, uh, so why don't you give us is, uh, whether that's, if it's a primary or secondary, roll 2d6, secondary. add your wisdom modifier, if you've got one. Um... If you have, uh, if it's a, a tertiary, 1d6 plus your wisdom modifier, you're looking for, I think, a 4 or higher here. Right. So my wisdom's 14, so I get a plus 1. Nice. And that means 
and it's secondary, so 2d6 so plus six, and then we one. take the highest. Uh, do, and do, do, plus do, one. Uh, sorry, my mouse is not playing. Let's get my mouse going around a moment ago, too. I know. It was a good mouse, but it's getting old. Mm. 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 Ooh, that's a no. That's a no. Okay, so then, uh, Robert, uh, you can just give us... I'm going to raise the DC by one on this, so mm -hmm. just give us a 1d6 roll and add your wisdom modifier, if any. Okay. Uh, and sorry, what is the actual... Um... This wouldn't be anything Sixth Sense would help with. Hmm, let's see. Uh, Sixth Sense. Barbarians are naturally right. alert to danger. Uh, no. This is more, okay. uh, although that might come into play in a moment. <laughs> All right. Uh, hold on. So, so it's 1d6. 1D6 plus yeah, and if you, wisdom. I think you only had one modifier in your stats. So yeah. 1d6. Yeah. Yeah, so this would be. All right. So you guys are wandering along. You just finished off the last of the. Uh, of the water and you're beginning to suspect that perhaps this tribe that's chasing you is driving you deeper into the desert beyond because mm -hmm. you keep trying to find a way to go around and they seem to be always in front of you and that's when you realize as you're walking along unfortunately neither of you spotted this really until maybe the wind is picking up until you find yourself standing the wind blows and you are standing in the ruins of some kind of enormous and oversized ship. Uh, you can give us a six sense check there, uh, Calgum. Okay, so that's uh, 2d6. Yeah, and then you add your wisdom modifier if you've got one. DC no. is five. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. so there is something, so as this blows away, tell me how uh, seeing that you're standing effectively in the, in the hull of this ancient ship, of course it would be a ship to start this. Uh, yeah. Uh, ship. <laughs> it's a sword and sorcery game. How are we not starting off with you guys in a shipwreck in some way or another? This used uh, to be a beach on a long ago land called Thule, which uh, <laughs> was millions of years ago. <laughs> so, what are you guys... Uh, I guess first off, how, what would be the reaction for Rudolph and Calgum uh, for finding themselves here? Calgum, your sixth sense is telling you there is something very off about this. Beyond just a, a ship in a desert, which in the Crimson Lands is sort of a, you know, yeah. if you live the lives you guys live, that is not anything uh, terribly unanticipated. Uh, Colgum reacts by raging. No. Uh, yeah. um, uh, so hold up. And he, he puts up a hand uh, near Rudolph saying, hold up, something's not right here. I don't know what. No, like, like, does he get any ideas of... It's just a danger sense, I guess. So, yeah, there is something... Yeah. Uh, I think you can f perhaps feel something moving beneath the surface. He looks down and he said, says, uh, something's under the sand. Let's get to the rocks. So then with that... Let's see here. Yeah, sounds spicy. Let me just grab... Some here. So you have that warning. Uh, is anyone carrying more than their encumbrance? Or is anyone slowed down, is I guess what I'm asking? No. Our weapons are just count as one thing. <laughs> uh, it depends. The heavy thing, heavy weapons might count as two. I don't know. Okay. Let's, but let's I don't see. have any, so I'm, I should be unencumbered. Oh, yeah. I've got a total of five. Yeah, I've got a total of four. Okay, yeah, so you guys are good. All right, so then what you can see... is pulling themselves yeah, out of the ground. Oh, here we go. It's my mouse is turned to act up. Hmm. Something oh, in the sure. hold of this ancient ship is yeah, pulling itself out of the sand. And I have good news. They do not suffer damage. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, good news for you or that or me us or them <laughs> yeah, this is more for me <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, hold on. Guess a, a sling won't work uh, it, it, quite possibly um, okay so then guys that is they begin pulling themselves out so let's talk about 
combat. Uh, now we'll assume each, so each round I believe lasts between six and 10 seconds. Initiative is extremely simple. Whoever has the higher decks, you go first. Mm -hmm. uh, what mean. are your respective dexterity scores? 18. Uh, 18. 17. Yep. 18, 17. Okay, oh. so it'll yeah. be uh, Calgum, then Rudolph, then these things. I'm just checking for movement here. I think you're able to... In here. Spacing, movement within melee. A defender effectively blocks an area about arms reach plus weapons. There's no attacks of opportunity unless we want them to, and I kind of mm -hmm. like not having attacks of opportunity. They make for a more interesting thing, other than the fighter class. So the fighter can make a make attacks of opportunity. Combat round is 10 to 12 seconds long. Um, there are about five to six combat rounds in a turn. Uh, so uh, no one is entitled to a... F oh, uh, Calgum. So what I was looking for is movement in combat. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Look at the end. It's one of the things I like about these OSR games is there's only, you know, a handful of pages to look through to figure out how to play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Here we go. Hmm. Let's do this. Your movement divided by two, that's how many squares you can move. Okay. Okay. So, uh, how do I find my movement? Uh, you, a 12, unless, uh, unless you got something else that uh, modifies it, yeah, okay. your movement is a 12. Okay. So it'll be okay. six, six squares. Uh, diagonals do not count. So okay. these things are still pulling themselves up from the yeah, from the sand. Uh, they are not, they're in a, basically in a prone position, which means you'd have plus one to hit them. So, uh, Calgum, you're up first, what are you doing? Um, he's going to, by the way, he's, he's got a chaotic alignment. So just so you know, okay. uh, not that that matters in this probably. Um, uh, he's going to charge and so it's move and attack. You basically get yeah, I think, one. I think you can, uh, let's uh -huh. see here. Uh, <laughs> why can't I pick it? So um, fire. My... Oh, do you have control over your tokens? Hold on. I mean, I don't, you. I, I don't have control Madison, and I don't on. have. And I don't have HP on here, so here so, I, so I'm assuming that means I have infinite there HP. There you go. Yeah. Uh, your red bar is your hit points. Uh, hit points. There you go, guys. Okay. Do you have control of your All tokens right. now? Can you see your tokens? I do. I do. I can see my, <laughs> I, I can see my tokens. Okay. I just have infinite hit points. Go okay. case. So he's going to move here. Yep. And his plan is to attempt to hit both of these guys. Sure. So, how many how how many hip dice? Uh, what weapon do you have out, or do you have uh, double or your double barrier? Oh wait, oh it's based on hip dice, so I only have one hip die. So yeah, yeah, it's only gonna be one. Okay. Uh, unless, unless, unless you are raging, because you get an extra hit dice when you rage. Yeah, let's go ahead and rage. Okay. It's like, it's like, ah, so this will last for four sense. rounds. What is yep. Cal? Does he? Is there some um, you know barbarian curse he uh, spews out? Um, as charging in, let's say, die again. <laughs> okay. All right. So then, uh, what we do is uh, we roll. Uh, you have two hit dice. Uh, your dex gives you plus two to hit, right? Yes. No, dex is plus four. Sorry, plus two. Plus two. Okay. Plus two. Yeah. Okay. So then. Um, Basically, what you need is roll a d6 against that first one, okay. uh, and you need a uh, one. Can I do a plus two on both? Uh, on each of them, yeah. But yeah, okay. roll them separately, so your first attack, yeah. yep, that's a hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Uh, it's 1d6 plus your strength modifier. Is there any way I can miss? Three? Is there any way I can miss? Uh, if you roll a one, one is always a miss. Okay. Whoa, two. And that's enough. So this thing is shattered. As you smash okay. it, go ahead and roll your second hit dice. Yeah. Uh, it's a hit as well. Go ahead and roll damage. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see. It's hit points. Not destroyed. Yeah. And it's still. <sighs> All right. Uh, then, Rudolph, what are you doing? 
I think I will move two, three. So I'll sort of move over here, and then I'm going to try using my sling on this one, on uh, the one three down and two to the right. Three down, two to the right. Yep. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. then go ahead and uh, make your attack. This will be actually minus one to hit because of uh, it's still prone. So you will need a. Uh, uh, four to hit it. Four to hit, and then I'm one d six plus one because of my dex of seventeen. Yep. Okay. Nice. Just enough. Quack. Go ahead and roll damage. I'll roll hit points for this thing. Ooh, this is a tough one. All right, so solid hit, uh, but it is still coming. All right, so then on their turn, uh, they are going to have to spend half of their round getting up, and then they can move half or they can attack. Uh, this one is starting to move in on you, Calgum. Yeah. Two, Come three. On. One, two, three. Uh, one, two. So I only got one. Uh, I'm rolling a d6. What is your defense? Uh, uh, what is... Defense, uh, or your DC, your DC. DC is based on. It's three is plus your Dex modifier. Five. <laughs> five. Okay, so I need a five to hit you. Mm -hmm. Does not. <laughs> swings at you and misses. Uh, then That's top of the room. Got. Calgum, you're up. What are you doing? Um, he's uh, gonna try to hit the one that was here, and then he's gonna try to back swing the spear into one of them behind him. Okay. So. Go ahead. Oh, so you need D6. a three. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, their DC is a three. That's a hit. Yeah. Go ahead and roll damage. Six. Okay, just, Another one. Hold on, it's a spear. So half damage from non-smashing weapons. That's... Pat, you pass through and clip one of its rib bones. Yep. Um, he'll go after the same one. Same one? Okay. Yeah. Uh... Okay, uh, that's a hit. Once again, go ahead and roll damage. Remember, you can push uh, the uh, up arrow. We'll cycle through your oh, yeah. previous rolls. Yep. Nice, and that's enough. He basically, he basically skewers the uh, head off the uh, off the rest of the body and it swings behind him at one of the ones yeah. standing behind him. Rudolph, that's what are you two doing? Rounds. <laughs> I guess I'll draw my dagger. Okay. And try and... Uh, now, would I be able to move one square and hit, or if, uh, just stay where I am? Uh, there is one engaged with you right now. Yeah, so I was just going to move around across from him by one. Oh, yes, so you can. Yeah. Being, you uh, move. So I, I can't go. remember what it is rules was written. I mean, these classic games tend to say if you're attacking, you can move half your uh, movement. So, we'll so I'll just that. move there okay. and try and hit him. Go ahead. All right, uh, that is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay, even with the half damage, that is enough for that to go down. All right, uh, then on the Skeleton's turn, this one will move up to you, Rudolph, and that is not a hit. And then oh. uh, here we go. On Calgum, we got two attacking you. Uh, they seem to be human, but they have long since whatever, uh, whether it's the wind uh, or the uh, creatures of the desert, it's eaten all the flesh off of these things. First attack on you, and you oh, that is a hit. <laughs> Damage mm -hmm. is uh, 1d minus 1, so it's a medium weapon, so this is minus 1. Uh, so mm -hmm. you take minimum 1, you take 1 point of damage. What is your DR, though, on your armor? Uh, I'm trying to transfer these to a piece of paper so I can do that. Just... Sure. Right. What are you wearing and that DR... turtle shell thing? Yeah, I am. Dr. Four. Uh, Dr. Four. Yeah. Nice. So it hits yep. you, but your armor protects you. And then yep. second attack hits as well. Doesn't get through your armor though. Yeah. Yep. So you have that Why turtle shell armor. I think you, uh, Rudolph has been mocking you for it, uh, but uh, <laughs> it is definitely uh, making its uh, uh, yeah. or proving its value now. Calgum, yes. you're up next. What are you doing? Um, he turns around and he tries to swipe through both of these guys in one blow. Okay. Uh, so I think this is your penultimate the... round of raging as well. Yeah. 
So he's going to swipe at the one directly under him, directly okay. under the uh, hit points for so. it. There we go. One d six plus two. Okay. Solid hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, with halved, nearly down. taking it down. Okay. Okay. And so he'll, he'll basically, um, you know what? We'll, we'll do what I said. He's going to go after the other one. He's okay. Basically, I'll roll hit points for the other one. Oh. Uh, that's actually plus two, so that's five. That's a hit as well. Go ahead, roll damage. Oh. Nice. Oh. Yeah, uh, so unfortunately, this one seems to be quite intact because the okay. having. Uh, if you're using something bludgeoning, uh, you yep. would do full damage on these things, just like in other yep. versions of D and D. Okay. Yep. Rudolph, what are you doing? This one is still trying to drag you back beneath the sands with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm going to. Dodge and faint, and give him a good slash. Okay. So this will be plus one on top of what I roll. Yep. So yeah, it's a yep. six. Go ahead and roll damage. And because then I can thing. do that. Three. Okay, so halved. Still kicking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the one that is facing you, Rudolph, once again, will attack you. That's not a hit. Calgum, we go. A uh, miss and a miss. Your turn, Calgon. What are you doing? Last round of raging. He's going to try the same thing. Uh, except he's bringing it back the other way. He did it this way. Okay. So, let's see. Six plus two. That one. And it's a miss. That's, now, you yeah. could spend... You want to spend your astonishing fortune to re-roll that? Sure. Okay. So, go ahead and re-roll that. Yeah. That is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, two one, one, point one but that is enough to take that first one down. Uh, okay. you have one more hit dice. Oh, so do I need to roll a d6 to try At the end of the round, seven? I sort of thought that at the end of the round is when okay. you roll to see if the... Okay. Uh, you can't use Sonishing Fortune more than once a round. Okay. So at the uh, end of your turn, we'll roll solid seems... hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, I wish we could do criticals. Uh, yeah. Ah! No! <laughs> now, give us a d6 roll. You want to roll a two or higher... And you yep. still got your astonishing fortune. Yep. Oh, oh, yep. Keeping it yep. interesting. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, then Rudolph, you're up next. What are you doing? Rudolph will keep at his. He's dodging. He's fainting, and he's rolling and adding one to it with uh, a mind blowing two. You an astonishing fortune that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Why not? Let's okay, give it good. A, just for. There you go. There Solid go. hit. Go ahead and roll damage. The first one was a faint. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Three down, down, down. That is enough. Take that down and then give us a D6 a six roll. See if your Sanction Fortune is gone. A two or higher is all you need. Oh, that no! <laughs> your fate is gone. So you can re reduce that green bar down to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it is this last remaining one. Yeah. Hits you. Uh, Calgon, mm -hmm. let's see if it manages to... Ooh, four. I think that's... Yeah, your, but... Is your DR four? Yeah, it is. Okay, so it doesn't get through your armor, but very close. No. Yeah. Uh, then, Calgum, you're out of rage now. Yeah. Do you suffer any penalty when at, after raging? It doesn't look... Hold on, let me check. Oh, wait, actually, I gave you max rage, and we forgot to roll for it. should have been... Uh... Oh, 1d3 plus 1, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. We, okay. Uh, we're okay. all learning here. Yep. Uh, all right, no penalty when it uh, ends. Yeah. Okay. So, just that's cool. one on this guy. Yep. Okay. And yes, solid hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Three's one. You're packing away at this guy. Still not down. Is, um, it, is it rounded down or up? Uh, rounded, rounded down. down. Okay, got it. Uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, right. Rudolph, what are you doing? Calgum seems I to be will. easy. Carved one, through two, several of these, three, but he still seems four, to be struggling four, with those one. Six. Rudolph, uh, Calgum, you need help again? <laughs> um, I've taken down three of these. How many have you taken down? Four. Did you not notice? Then <laughs> okay. this one wow. tries to once again yarr, get to Calgum. Uh, that's a miss. Calgum, your turn again. What are you doing? Uh, Swigging. He he, um, he he glances over at Rudolph and you know again no idea about sarcasm or humor. He's like, wow, that's a lot. Gotta take this guy. <laughs> that is a hit. Uh, Go ahead, roll four. damage. Yeah. Yeah. And there yeah. it goes. Yeah. Crush that thing. Three. Now, uh, I see that um, 
Let's see here. Both of you have stealth, which is a good thing because, guys, what is that in the horizon? Is that... There's a cloud. It appears that the riders uh, from the northwest have found you once again. Hmm. I think I have... My stealth is tertiary. Partially because I was thinking that Hey, the other guy has stealth. I don't need to do that. But, uh, uh, you do get to add your dex modifier to it, so that's oh, yeah. definitely yeah. a good thing. And um, uh, yeah, so your choices, I think, are to run or to hide. What are you guys thinking? Hide in the um, yeah. We can. Yeah, he, he kind of looks over here. He says, "I don't know that spot Let's there." Hide. Okay. That spot right there. We can uh, dig under a little bit. Shadowed. Let's hide. Okay. I agree. So okay. go ahead. Uh, roll your two. stealth skills. Uh, if you've got multiple dice, just uh, make sure you roll those and then add your dex to the highest. Because what this does, this sets the target number for them to find you. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Seven for me. Seven. So seven for me. Yep. Okay, so six and seven. So I need a six... So you guys go racing over, you get yourself uh, buried down, they come riding over, they look down at this, uh, perhaps, the, I mean, they didn't see you whatsoever, and perhaps they judged that uh, only fools would go down in an obviously cursed ship. So they are not going down there. And then they ride on. So, let's try one more thing. Uh, just to see how it works. Rudolph, you can have your Astonishing Fortune back. Uh, let's see what... Uh, go to the premium assets here. Um, we're going to touch on all the uh, classic uh, uh, sword and sorcery tropes here. Where's my snowy wilderness here? We'll see how you guys fare against a uh, mountain troll or a mountain ogre. Well, come on. Why not just do a fang drag? I wait. <laughs> <laughs> so you seem you're, you're, uh, f uh, you have access to your, um, what do you call it, your uh, rage once again as well. Okay. And uh, if, uh, Rudolph, you feel that you would be sneaky or something like that, um, you can feel free to do so. I think um, what I give you is a plus one to hit. If you're attacking from unaware, so that's sort of the maybe plus one to hit, plus one to damage. Because right now, like because the the light weapons thing isn't part of the game, it doesn't seem like until you reach a higher level that your uh, your sneak attack thing really does much in the game. Um, where is it here? Snow, snow, winter. Here you go, guys. Winter forest. Or Winter Foothills. Winter Foothills feels like a place to go and fight. There we go. Trolls? I do have one question for you. Why on earth mm -hmm. did you accept this job? What job? Oh. <laughs> what, what's the job? Hunt, hunting a winter ogre. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> like, why, why, why are we doing this? Yeah, well, picture you guys are sitting around a campfire. How do you think you would attract such a thing? Uh, a winter... Wait, a winter ogre in the desert? Uh, no, no, in the... Um, it's not in the desert any longer. This is a different... Oh, oh okay. Different adventure? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, he has track, so I assume there's lots of footprints. Around, yeah. Do you, does um, the barbarian have any kind of tracking? Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Yes. Oh, sweet. Okay. So, so he's uh, it's his secondary skill. So he would have two dice on that. Two dice on it. Yeah, and then it's a it's a wisdom modifier. Why don't you give us a quick track check? Let's see how well you you've been following this thing. <laughs> one day very bad. One day very good. Ah, oh, six. Nice. So yeah, you know precisely where this thing is. I think what we'll say, let me just get to the GMs later and get a token down here, and I'll give you a, let me track the hit points properly this time. 
Make it big. Yeah. Okay, and stands for ogre. There we go. This thing has been feeding on uh, locals for quite some time. Uh, it is a an ogre you would know is a fearsome. Come on. Yeah, I don't know if it's the. I don't know if it was roll twenty uh, today or what, but the, my mouse has been really wonky. James, would you give us a three d six roll, please? Okay. Oh boy. Calcum, this uh, climate change is doing terrible things around here. <laughs> All right, so I think what we'll... Here, let's do this, actually. Uh, let me go to the... Put you up here on this overhang. We can picture that you guys have been... Uh, because you rolled so well in your track check, you have tracked this thing. Let me give it a uh, handout here so you can know what you've been tracking. So under Beast Mastery, I have to actually do this in game. I have to um, find this... an animal that was. Oof! Yeah. I'm glad I picked a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where brr, this thing's been stalking along. Uh, sorry, what was your question, uh, Robert? Oh no, Beast Mastery. So he doesn't start with any. It's something that I have to find. Oh, uh, let's see. In what does Beast Mastery do? Well, it says that over time, you can befriend a wide variety of animals, from lions to weasels. Um, As many? Let's give you one. All right. Sure. What do you, uh, you want a wolf? Yeah, Eagle. I think a wolf works. Oh, wolf. I think a wolf works good. Sure. Yeah. Give us a 1d6 roll and All add right. uh, two to that. All right. So Please. in between the fight in the desert, he found a wolf. Yeah. And what's your wolf's name? Um, I just call him Wolf. A wolf named Wolf. Gets two of them. One d six plus two. One d six plus two, please. Okay. Eight. Nice. Eight. Okay. Actually, you know what? What? Because your what's your charisma? Charisma is only eleven. Only eleven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Controlled by. Robert. Let's give you two. I'll bet you this thing's okay. going to be a tough opponent. Okay. Okay. Oh, you put it. And I have to roll for the next one? Uh, yeah, uh, same thing. 1D. Uh, nameplate. Yeah, six for the second one. Okay. Maybe they're a mated pair. And he saved their. Uh, he saved one of their cubs. Yeah, love it. Point. Okay, and here's Wolf 2. Ups. Ups. He has six hit points. All right, so uh, the hit dice in this work uh, the exact same way for, for you guys. So your uh -huh. wolves will each have uh, one hit dice to attack. Uh, uh -huh. Their uh, DC is a 14. Uh, sorry, it's a four. They have no armor. And they have a bite. Uh, just a regular uh, medium-sized weapon. Cool. Move is a 12, and they can track, just like you. Cool. So... Uh, any special maneuvers, any extra things you think you would have picked up uh, along here? Like, Rudolph, if you want to pick up a bow or something, you are welcome to do so. Mm. But what are you thinking? I mean, the mechanics, uh, uh, I don't think, are quite as uh, as bad. What are you guys thinking? Uh, what was your plan to hunt this thing? It's 12 feet tall. It looks pretty tough. And you've heard that this thing can pull apart a man with his bare hands. Often to eat it. What you do have the advantage of, though, is it is slow. This thing is lumbering along. And I think what you're seeing is it's it's got, like, maybe a campfire going here that it's using to cook uh, its most recent uh, prizes. Um, Let me find a campfire. I, I think... Uh... 
Kogan's idea would be he would try to engage this thing while the wolves circle behind and um, then, you know, with basically a signal or whistle is their signal to attack and they've done this a few times. Okay. Uh, and he's not quite sure how to factor Rudolph into this. Uh, uh, so just Rudolph, uh, distance. He'll probably charge in throwing the axe first. Okay. And then go in with the spear. That's his plan. Okay. What about you, Rudolph? <laughs> He's not very subtle. Any plans how to take this thing down? Yes. So, Kogan, I will keep behind to control the battle with my sling. Okay. Mm -hmm. You distract uh, him. <laughs> the game also facilitates, um, like you don't have the specific abilities that uh, mm -hmm. a fighter or a wayfinder has, or wayfarer has, where they can specifically try and do things. But you know, like um, improvise things or like throwing snow or whatever, yeah. whatever kind of creative combat stuff you can do. The game can kind of accommodate that stuff pretty easily, mm -hmm. if you if you wish to take advantage of any of that. Um, then, uh, Calgum, if you and the wolves are going to sneak in, why don't you give us a stealth check? Okay. Is Rudolph's plan to stay kind of where he is until Fair things mind. kick off? The ogre yeah, is going to be. I'm going to try and get close. Yeah. Yep. So. Where am I? You can position yourself. The cliff itself is probably about 20 feet tall, and then it goes down to the slope here. Over up here. That leads down. Um, you guys have a good view of this critter. From where you are right now, um, call them in a moment of rare introspection before attacking. Says, maybe we should see if it will sleep. Ah, here we are. We wait. That's an idea. Let us. Tra indeed, track him until he uh, shows rest. That's a good idea. Okay. So I think what do you see is this thing finishes, you know, cooking its meal, and then it horribly devours whatever poor soul it dragged away last. It looks like there's a bloody uh, hide sack that it's got that has, uh, you know, future meals in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Why don't we do this? Uh, why don't you each give us a stealth check? So be cool your rules. what your stealth skill is, and then add your dex to the highest dice. Yep. Will this include the uh, wolves? You know, what, let me set the difficulty for it. No, I'll let you bend your wolves benefit. You just need to beat a three. Okay. okay. So don't roll in that one. I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're good. Okay. All right. Yep. So this thing, what you see is as the night goes on, as the um, the evening comes, the stars come out above the dancing aurora borealis overhand. The wind picks up, the temperature plummets. This thing finally, after eating its fill, belching horribly, a belly full of human flesh, cuddles up, and it goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. Welcome, a good strategy. Well done, that man. <laughs> it does well, seem that Rudolph off. is surprised that it worked. Yes. <laughs> what would you guys like to do next? Uh, wait just a little bit uh, for it to sleep, fall deeper into slumber, and then get within range where basically Colgan can charge it. Okay. The horrible. I wonder, how's the fire? How is the fire? Still going. Yeah. Now, Welcome. I have a wonder if these such snow trolls like fire if shoved in their faces. Yeah, have you heard anything of this? Um, no, but seems seems reasonable. How close to the fire is he sleeping? Uh, he's probably about five feet away. Yeah, so that's a fair distance. Uh, um, I mean, like, like wait, within, he's, like, if, if what you're planning on doing is, is, like, tossing some coals or something at him, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it, you definitely is close enough for that. Is there a, I'm, I'm assuming any logs in there have gone down to coals by this point. Um, uh, no, no, like... it's, it's still, because it's within the first hour or so, and he, okay. uh, because of his size and strength, you <laughs> see easily he's able to pull, like just pull limbs off of some of these trees, break them yeah. down and toss them in the fire. Yeah, he'll, he'll look at it and see if there's any sturdy limbs, basically, that look like they could also cause damage on their own. Yeah. And maybe like, you know, poking far enough out that he can grab part of it that's not um, So we're, we're right now we're talking in the abstract because you guys are at the top of this cliff still. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what his plan is going to be. To like try to find one that's kind of uh, sticking out a bit so yep. they can grab it and then bring it down on him. On sure. His head. Basically. It'll count as basically as a medium weapon, and I'll make him make a reflex save uh, okay. to potentially count, to uh, either be blinded or. Are you trying to set fire to him, or are you just trying to just like disorient him? Um. um yeah. Yeah. A, a smack in the face. It should work either way. Yeah. While okay. he's sleeping. Yeah. Maybe a smack, and then try to hold it down once it hits him. Okay. Okay. Right. So then. Um, Let's see. This time I'll set it secretly. Okay. So, guys, would you each make a stealth check, and then you can move six squares? You can't move. I think you probably can only move half speed when you're stealthing, but um, we're, we're going to assume that you're making your way down there. Okay. I forgot my plus two last time. Oops. Yeah. Nice. Wow. And then, oh, was that your roll there? You rolled a nat one? Yeah. Ooh, I, think I'm gonna, wanna... I think I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Astonish fortune that? that. Yeah. You got it. Nice. Yeah, that's a little better. Amazing. So then roll 1d6. Uh, you need to roll two or higher to keep your fortune. Yep. There you go. Once again, <laughs> keeping it interesting. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so go ahead and move so six squares, move. guys. And you can move your walls as well, Calcum. I think they could jump down from like maybe here. Would they be able to jump from there to about here? Uh, like, could could one go from here to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So not not down yeah. like that, but uh, around okay. the way you had it before. Okay. Got it. Uh, I mean, not yeah. if you're trying to stealth. Okay. True. Okay. Yeah. Then, um, go ahead and give us one more stealth, guys. Mm -hmm. Let me set the difficulty here. The five. Nice. Go ahead and move no. yourselves uh, Three. six squares. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make the full. Three is enough. Oh, th three is enough, yes. Oh, well, if, I mean five in total with your dex bonus. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was moving you. My bad. Yeah. I should be close enough to see. One. Oh, and this thing, it stinks like a charnel house. Uh, now that you're in closer, its beard is full of viscera mm -hmm. and dried blood. And then this one's right there. Yeah. Mm. But it's still is fully asleep. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So Colgan oh. looks at the fire. Like, and there's and definitely, uh, yeah, you can see there's for sure okay. a log in there. Okay. Grabs one, both hands. Yep. And oh, so you're going for fire. a heavy weapon. Uh, yeah, you don't have anything else to go with. Because so. uh, the Are reason you... that that's a benefit is that if you if you choose to start kick off with a rage and you're rolling two mm. hit dice, yeah. Uh, each hit, you stack yeah. exactly, and these things are yeah, a little yeah. tougher than the long Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he takes a deep breath, looks at that, he looks back, makes sure everything's in place. There's it is. Like, he, he, he's trying to hold in the rage until the exact moment he picks it up and brings it down. Sure. Don't want to give it off. And then, then he can't help it. Once he, once he grabs the thing, he's holding it over the thing's head, he's got... Ah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we'll position you here, and then go mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, you you be first in initiative. Okay. So it's yeah. This thing's dex is a six. So, uh, yes, you'd be rolling uh, two hit dice. Uh, the yep. 
DC on this one is going to be a four because he's prone. Each four okay. your roll counts as a hit. So go ahead and roll 2d6. Okay. That's one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, two hits. Okay, so roll a uh, 2d6 for damage. Holy. Oh, good Boom. one. So you brain this thing, and then I'm going to make a save for it. Hold on here. Um, tears four. Look at that. It roars in pain. Now, I have uh, my DC for this uh, is going to be a, a six. I need to roll a six to make a successful save. Oh, I can oh, see. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So it's... Oh, yeah. Rudolph, you're up. What are you doing? Sorry, I am my... going to do a slingshot. Go ahead. Three rounds. Three rounds of rage. That's Three rounds of rage, one. okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Getting up a different one. Okay. So. So that'd be plus one. So plus five. That's, a, that's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> oh. Hits the hide. It does not seem to have any appreciable effect. The wolves. What are they doing? Uh, each one's going to dart in and try to bite at the hamstring. <laughs> So roll 1d6 for each of them. No modifiers. Uh, they need a three or higher to hit. Okay. That's the first one, and the second one misses. Okay. And then 1d6. So first one hits, yeah, roll 1d6 damage. Nice! Ooh, good <laughs> All right, uh, then... Two. This thing is still surprised this round, and unfortunately it's not uh, blinded yet. Uh, but so top of the round, we're on round two. Um, Calgum, you're up first. What are you doing? Bring it down again. Okay. I'm assuming the fire went out, probably. Ah, uh, uh, we'll see. I, I think I will interpret okay. his save as to whether or not that's the okay, case. Great. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, that's the first he's, still, he's still prone, so it's still only a two you need, really. Don't roll yep. a one. But that's the second one. Two hits. So go ahead and roll damage. 2d6. Yeah. Come on, big money. Nice! Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah that's fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah! All yeah, right. So then, this thing... Let's see here. Oh, yeah, and you guys can see the, the bar, but not the numbers, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so you're seeing it go down. Okay, then I need to make one same save once again, although it's going to be only a five this time. Yep. Damn it. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll for your. Uh, oh, sorry, Rudolph. Rudolph, you're up next. Um, I'll do again plus one. Okay. Six. Nice. Uh, definitely a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Come on. Four ah! this time. Hits his hide. Uh, not quite enough. Then um, the wolves. Yep. First one. That's a hit. Second one. Both hit. Nice. Go ahead and roll 2d6. I'll supply them separately. Yeah, okay. mm, they're whirling so on this thing, but its hide is a lot tougher than it looks. All right, mm -hmm. then it is the Frost Ogre's turn. It pulls itself up to its full height. I have three hit dice. I think we're going to try... Uh, first on yeah uh, it grabs this massive trunk that is its uh, weapon Diana and then it sweeps at uh, wolf number two I think because that's the one okay. I saw first so uh, what is uh, I said the defenses of that thing it's a three or four uh, I want to say four a four, okay. Yeah. So every four here will hit. Okay. Uh, it's two, so I roll 2d6 damage. Oh, terrible. <laughs> Clips him. <laughs> Does not take it down. Then we're at top of the round. Calgum, you're up. What are you doing? And this thing's up now, so it's a little harder to hit. Yep. yep. Last, uh, last attempt. He's still swinging at the pace. Okay. So, Go. just that's the first one. Come on. That's the second. 
Okay, both hit. Fives? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So roll 2d6 damage. Come on. Oh, not quite as not good. Not as good this time, but that's all right. Okay. Minus two. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rudolph. Uh, again, another slingstone heads, heads there. So okay. Oh, a three. Okay, three. Let me see if there's any rules as written. He... Neat things you can so... do. Yeah. So since he aimed at the head, does this are we saying that this thing's no longer on fire, or just because he's now up? He's able you to actually dodge? never because it made it save. You never actually succeeded. Okay. I was making a reflex okay. save for it. You took the full damage, and I was making a reflex save to see if it was going to be blinded or on fire. Unfortunately, okay. none of your hits. And at this point, at this point, now that he's up, that's no longer an option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so, and as a reminder, one other way to. Um, what do you call it, to get an extra attack? It gives you minus one to hit, but you can have a weapon in each hand that gives you an extra oh, hit yeah, dice yeah. to attack. Okay, all right. You got that plus two to hit with your deck, so that would be, a, yep. a, you know, you could use your ax and your spear. Um, yep. So okay, sure. All right, so Ruf, that was a miss. Um, do you want to uh, uh, sound she fortune that? Uh, Rudolph? Oh, uh, um... Yes. Uh, okay. Clearly, let's get. <laughs> oh, shoot. As then give us a d6 roll for your astonishing fortune. Uh, this is your first time using it, so just need to roll two or higher. No problem. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The wolves go next. I have a feeling they're going to be in trouble if they stick around, but I think they stick around one more round. Okay. Oh, that wolf, two points of damage, right? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Second one, not so much. Uh, okay, so um, first one is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. 1d6. Uh, not through the armor. Yeah. All right. Um, so here's another neat thing you can do, is you can sacrifice, if you've got more than one hit dice, you can sacrifice the hit dice to get plus one to hit for all your attacks. Hmm. Um, then it is this thing's turn. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still pissed at that wolf, so it is going to try... Get that. Uh, only one hit, which means mm -hmm. only 1d6 damage. Yep. But that's enough to kill it. You hear yeah. a yelp uh. as that first wolf goes flying back. Uh, then uh, it turns and looks at you, Calgum, as if to say, you're next. Uh, then it is, uh, in fact, your turn. You must know the initiative order. You are next. What are you doing? Yes. Uh... Man, that's that damage. It's, um, yeah, he's gonna grab. He's gonna drop the the two handed thing. Now, if I make, if I do two hits, do I get to do each one, each one separate? Maybe? Yeah, each but, one is separate. That's the downside. Is that medium weapons mm -hmm. all apply separately? The heavy weapons apply together. Rudolph, remember you can doing... use. I mean, you only got the one uh, hit dice right yeah, now. Yeah, I've only got one hit dice. Yeah, yeah. so that, yeah. I was oh, checking yeah. that. It's like <laughs> damn. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's probably better for him to go with two weapons now. So now that the now that the rage has dropped. Okay. So yeah, you uh, yeah. don't take any actions to get your weapons out. You got an axe and you got a spear out. Okay. Go ahead and make your two attacks. Yeah. First, that's oh, a minus one, so that's a five. Uh, okay, five's that's a hit. Only plus one. That one's a miss. You want to start um, your fortune then? Yep. Okay. Nope. Uh, three is. Uh, actually, three is good enough. The ogre's only got a DC three, uh, okay. so that does hit. Uh, go ahead and okay, roll so uh, damage for each. One d six. One d six. Oops. Not through the armor. Yes. There oh, you go. Okay. All right. Oh yes, yeah, so my I would have hit actually. Uh, and then you would have hit. Yeah. So oh, go ahead and roll damage I rolled for yours. a two, but I have a plus one. But uh, uh, go ahead and roll I'm damage. Just, I didn't. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah, so, so Rudolph okay, rolled damage, and um, Robert. Now That's it's a two. Yeah. So much yep. fortune's a two. There you go. Still uh -huh. around. Yay. Okay, uh, and then five. Nice. So, um, oh, sorry, five That's damage. Well. That means mm -hmm. another one. It sees you now, uh, Rudolph. A <laughs> little hit right above its uh, forehead. Uh, that is the, that was uh, Calgum. Rudolph, you're up again. What are you doing? Uh, Rudolph does a little wink to the ogre and then tries. That is a hit. Uh... That's a hit. <laughs> So Wait, five, so... did we miss the wolf? Yeah. I know, the wolf always goes time. after Rudolph. Okay. Nice! 
Uh -huh. uh, so hits again. Uh -huh. It's really not pleased with that. Wolf goes now. Wolf, this is the one with eight hit points. He's, uh... Come on. Call, call him, you know, yeah, he comes in. The wolf comes in one more time. Uh, That's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Come on. Nope. Ah! No! <laughs> All right, uh, so this is uh, now uh, as badly injured as this thing is. It is going to try and get you, Calgum. Uh, mm -hmm. So it uh, pulls back this this club. Ooh, all misses. <laughs> Boom. Hits the ground. Dust, yeah, I think maybe it's near the fire. Like sparks and yep. snow come up from it, uh, yep. but he misses. Uh, it mm -hmm. is uh, once again top of the round. Calgum, your turn. What are you doing? All right. Oh, these six plus one for the first swing. The that Missed. one. You want an astonishing fortune that? Yeah. <laughs> You're pushing up. Uh, yeah, that is a hit the then for the second. And here's his, and here's his uh, spear. Please. Okay, so the axe and the spear both hit. Go ahead and roll damage for those. 1d6, 1d6. Nope. <laughs> yes. Okay. Another one. point. And then astonishing fortune, you need to roll a four or higher now. Yeah. Yep. Nice. No problem. Still there. <laughs> All right, Rudolph. Um, Rudolph will s another sling stone heads its way. Okay. So that's a three. Uh, it's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. <clears throat> and that <laughs> bounces off. I think you could spend a Sanching Fortune on that if you like. Uh, oh, well, right. Okay. Yeah. Only live once. Yeah. In this case. <laughs> yeah. nope. So they give us a dec uh I think you've used your sausage portion to... once, so you yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh then it is the wolf's turn. You can hear it barking in. in the background. Yeah. Says, Come on. Good. Okay, uh that is a hit. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Not enough to get through. Alright. Then it's the ogre. It pulls that massive club back up again. <laughs> One hit. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so, but it does, I did not uh, add this before. It actually has, who is she yelling at? Who is she yelling at? She's yelling at nobody. <laughs> There's nobody out there. All right, I don't know the blinds up. Uh, I forgot to put them up for earlier. Uh, so then, uh, let's see, five points. So you take one point of damage there, Calgum. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, That's all you got. <laughs> nice. Uh, then it is Calgum's turn once again. What are you doing? Swing, swing. Okay. Try to think what else I can do. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, yeah, we'll slash that. Why not? Okay. Nice. So hit. Uh, and then one. your second attack. I uh, Also a hit. So you got roll 2d6 yeah. damage. Yeah. So, no. Uh, uh, so now uh, you're... Rolling your Astonishing Fortune, you need a five or higher? Yeah. Nope. It's gone, finally. <laughs> Holy smokes. No longer a hero. <laughs> Out of luck. All right. Uh, then uh, it is Rudolph. What are you doing? Wing. Hit. Hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Ah. So, bing. Off it. Darn. Okay. I think probably what one way you could uh, implement uh, Chris is on a six that you reduce the DR by one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would work somewhere. pretty easily. Then wolf time. Yep. He goes in. Um, yeah. And then, nope. mm. Doesn't hit. Oh, Although he's an idea. flanking him, so side. probably gets a plus one to hit. So that probably is a hit. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Is there flanking in the game, or are we implementing it? I think there, I, there might be. I can't remember what's in the yeah. thing. Okay. Uh, okay. In the combat section, but there's yeah. a, there is a, a fair amount of options. But it also it's an old school game, so it really allows like yeah. you yeah. implement it as you see as appropriate. Yep. Yeah. All right, then it is once again going to try and get you, Calgum. Um, so it pulls back that club. Not a single hit again. Yeah. Boom. All right. Uh, so then, qu uh, two questions. There's. There's a one, one thought Calgum has, which is to move basically to here and then shove him into the uh, into the fire. Yep, I'd make that a fortitude save. He is pretty big and tough. He, he outweighs yeah. you, so I think okay. that would be. But you can definitely try that. 
The other thing would be, so he thinks about that, he's got two thoughts throughout the battle. The other one would be to try to sweep his legs so that he, with the spears, um, so that he falls. Yeah. I think okay. what I'd do is, I'd, uh, again, it'll be a fortitude save for him. Okay. On a, if you succeed, uh, I'll make a fortitude save for him um, based on your attack roll. And okay. then um, if he fails, he falls prone. You won't do damage, but you'll knock him prone, which would be plus one to hit. Yeah. Um, you know what? He he wants to do damage to him, so he's going to try to shove him into the fire. So he's going to move into here. Okay. <laughs> And then throw. So uh, I think, I think, I think. Um, what I'll instead do is I'll just give him an extra dice on resisting. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and uh, let's see here. Uh, it'd be one hit dice uh, mm -hmm. plus your strength modifier. Which is none. But okay. Yeah, we're, 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 come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll give you. Uh, why don't you roll an extra dice for the wolf? Okay. Uh, maybe. As someone Distraction who's uh, sex nice, go. whose okay. dog regularly jumps up and uh, pushes <laughs> people, uh, that seems appropriate. Yep. All right, yep. so I do have a 4d6, because my, my mm -hmm. save is normally a 3d6. I have 4d6 yep. to save, but I need a 6 to resist yep. this. Nope. No. Oh, Push good. back. Go ahead and roll 1d6, and it'll go right through his armor. Nice. Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> Uh, so he is shoved back, knocked prone. Arrgh! He's howling in pain as this thing is burning onto him. Both you and the wolf have gone. Rudolph, what are you doing? I will move over here and go again. Okay. Try and bullet him. That's a five. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Want to start you fortunate? Uh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. I'm a wild man. Three. Uh, there you go. No. Uh, you need a four to keep your astonishing fortune now. No. no. <laughs> it's gone. All right. So then this thing's turn. I'm going to make a reflex save to see if it takes more damage from the fire before it gets out. That's a two minus one, which means I need a five or higher. I, I, so he gets yeah. out without taking damage. Um, and he's up. Uh, he probably has reach so he'll be out and then he's going to just try and brain you once again uh, Calgon he is not pleased with you that's one hit so be 1d6 plus 1 7 oh. points so yep. woo, 3 get through three. boom uh, and uh, Calgum just bears his teeth and growls. The only language you can make out from this thing through its like big, uh, you know, tusk-filled mouth is "eat you." Then it is Calgum. Your turn again. What are you doing? Um, kind of looks like a wolf, so like yeah, and uh, just tries to shove him again. Okay, so roll two d six. Yeah. Set the difficulty there. Once again, a six. Holy nice. smokes. This okay, so he gets call call 46. I need a six to... He's wise oh. to it this time. Yeah. Uh, Rudolph, what are you doing? I'm going to come down here, and I'm hoping that I'm getting him from behind or something like that. Yep, yep. So that would be a three. A three is like a cold. hit. Yeah. Like shots. I'll add plus one damage for this as well for your sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Sneak attack doesn't really do anything at these low levels. Five, uh, then. There you go. So, yeah, from behind. All right. Uh, then it is... Um, oh, no. It's, it's Mountain Ogre turn. Uh, Calgum. Mm -hmm. oh, two hits that time. Oh, okay, so 2d6 plus one damage. Let's see. No, but not oh! through your armor. <laughs> Wang! That could, have been, that could have been bad. Yeah. <laughs> Calgum, your turn once again. What are you doing? This thing is bloodied. It's staggering along. There's still scorch marks on its back. Yeah. He's going to move. So the wolf's on this side, so he wants to get a flank. He wouldn't get a flank because of Rudolph, right? It's got to be. No, something. yeah, in melee, I think, is where you have to be. Yeah. So he's going to move back here. He's not going to do the push thing. Okay. Um, and if you want to move the wolf, too, you could, uh, like, to have it actually kitty corner from one another? 
Yeah, sure. You guys could coordinate. It's, it's your pet, right? So yeah, cool. I would believe you could coordinate that. Yeah, so go ahead and make your attack. So it'll only be a two you need to hit. Just don't roll yeah, a one. Plus three. Yeah. It's a hit. All right. Yeah, I do. Oh, and then the second attack. Yeah. Oh, no, but only one oh, attack because yeah, you... I moved half. Oh, no, but you got two hands. Aren't you uh, dual wielding? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, so it should be a plus. Uh, uh, well, I'm modifying. For, I'm doing it PF2 style. I'm just modifying the AC. Uh, so that'll okay. be a plus one, but a three is a hit. Uh, okay. okay, so go ahead and roll damage 2d6. I'm uh... <clears throat> so the spear gets in but doesn't pierce, but you manage to sink that axe down into its knee. Uh -huh. uh, and then Rudolph, you're up next. I will. Move down here. Keep, keep coming at the at an angle. Yeah. Four uh, to hit. To hit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Plus Four one. on a six. Come on. Uh. Mm. <laughs> then it is uh, wolf time. Yep. Just one d six. No. <clears throat> no. All right. This thing is once again. <sighs> Eat you. They're not pretty enough. Managed to hit once, so it's 1d6 plus 1. Mm -hmm. Ooh! Two, two points hits, through, Calgum. Boom! Yeah. Then now it... Calgum's speaking here look a little bit nervous. <laughs> Calgum, it's one, you once again. What are you doing? Uh, it looks pretty beat up. I'm just going to keep swinging. What else? Uh, you could try and disarm it, too, if you get rid of that heavy weapon. That's the thing that's making it. Uh, if it was attacking with its claws, those would be medium. Uh, okay. Sure. He's going to try to use the. Yeah, he'll try to use the spear. Can I do a disarm with both? Yeah, or because you get the minus one, one to hit. So just uh, okay. roll each. That'll set so my total difficulty. Is plus, total is plus two because it's uh, minus one for the thing, but plus one for the. Leader. Plus one for okay. which? For flanking. Again, I'm using the uh, PF2 rules for it. I'm modifying okay. the AC. Don't add the modifier to hit for flanking. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, so got then... Okay. okay, so your best rule looks like it's a four. Because yes. you get the uh, plus... Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Because yeah, a minus one for, for dual wielding, plus right. a two yeah. for your thing. So a net's a plus one. So four is the target number I've got. Mm -hmm. I'll make a fortitude save here. Oh! <laughs> Okay, uh, tough, Rudolph. Tough ogre. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, damage was Another before, puny no bullet go. heads his way. Yeah. It's hit. a hit. Uh, so this is, where, this is where spells really shine. Almost yeah. all damaging spells go right through armor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, and there you go. Another one through. So that's minus two. <laughs> it looks over at you, Rudolph. Uh, and then Wolf. That's a hit. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at this. This may be the last round for our mountain ogre. Oh. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it bellows out in fear and pain and hunger. Brings down its club once again at Calgum. Only one hit. Let's see. It's 1d6 plus 1. Oh, another point gets one through. Yeah. Boom. And Calgum, Calgum yells up the ogre. Eat you. Okay. Uh, so then Calgum, that is... Oh, yeah, you get uh, your turn. Again, what are you doing? Yep. So he's swinging two, okay. two shots. 1d6 plus 1. Solid and hit. Another. Not so good. Okay. I have no... Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, come on. No. Yeah. Uh, then Rudolph. This could be it. It's a hit. The kill. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Jeez! Well, I'm really disappointed because if I had taken this ogre down, I would have killed more ogres than Calgan can even count. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hit yeah. from the wolf. Come on! Come on! Oh no! <laughs> Jeez! All right, so then this ogre. Bleeding from every possible uh, location brings that thing up and down. Oh, oh ooh, 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 ooh. no, 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 no. <laughs> Two plus one on Calgum. Oh, four points of damage. You are knocked down, Calgum. Boom. Yeah. 
sweeps okay. up. So you're not dead. Uh, PCs do not die at zero. You enter the, uh, what do you call it? A dying phase. And what yep. is it here? I mean, it point? wouldn't be a game if our character didn't die, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. So you make a fortitude save to stay conscious. Okay. Okay, so it's well, a DC. Minus out. one. And, and your minus one. I think fort is your favored one, right? Yeah. Primary save is, is your fortitude. So I believe primary save is 2d6. So roll 2d6 plus your con modifier. Which is that? Right. Uh, you're conscious. So oh, you're okay. down. Uh, there isn't a negative. Uh, if you go below zero, here's what we apply. On your initiative phase, we roll 1d6. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're conscious still, Calgan, just on the ground and unable to act. Okay. Um, which means, Rudolph, you are up next. Oh, no, no, oh Calgon, yeah, it's Calgon's face, sir. Yeah. So give us a D6 yeah. roll, Calgon. No modifiers. One. No. No I, modifiers. And what's this for? Uh, this is for uh, no change. You are stabilized. Okay. Uh, so it. you're conscious, but you're not able to do anything. Oh, okay, uh, got it. Then, Rudolph, what are you doing? Um, right. Uh, I'll just yell, you ugly bugger. Take this. <laughs> Solid nice. hit again. <laughs> Animal can, damage, can, come on. Oh, ah! <laughs> I, I roll them always the wrong way around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then the wolf, come on. Wolf. Can it save its yeah, master? Okay, it, can't roll. <laughs> it hits. Do we stop doing this? I want to get. Oh, no. <laughs> so it turns. The ogre now turns to the wolf. Uh oh. Uh, only one hit. Uh, so know. it's 1d6 plus 1. Six points oh, of damage, though. Okay. Yay! This is... Yelps as this massive club hits it. Again, this ogre is near death right now. Calgum, yeah. give us a 1d6 roll. Yeah. Three. Uh, no change still. Uh, yeah. Then uh, Rudolph. It's a hit Come once on. again. Oh, Come on. the wrong way round. Where's that six we need? Yes! yes! Is now. <laughs> what does it look like as you take this mountain troll down? <laughs> It's lumbering there, glaring at me, and then I get one more and straight in the eye. <laughs> and it hits down. Now, here's a cool thing that is a very swords and sorcery thing. At the end of a fight, um, a character recovers half the hit points lost during battle after a swig of ale or water and a short rest. After that, mm -hmm. you heal one hit point per day or two hit points per day for uninterrupted rest. A week of rest will return the hit point the character to full hit points, regardless however many you lost. So, what is it that Rudolph does to rejuvenate Calgum? There's some brandy a... or something you got on you. I uh, I was going to say I've got some, and bear with me a second. I've got some uh, Dendrilis whiskey, which I've kept for a special occasion. So with that, <laughs> I pour that between his. Barbarian lips to uh... so that brings you back up to five hit points, Calgum. Um, uh, we we got it. Oop. So let's see here. Uh, so you be at there. You go. Ah, uh, and your wolf is still alive. The other, unfortunately, is uh, has shuffled yeah. off. So uh, that's so we didn't take our mid session break. Why don't we take our mid session break right now? Yep. Uh, I just need to grab mm -hmm. a, some more coffee uh, and uh -huh. uh, let Anna Banana out, um, and then we'll be back uh, momentarily. Okay. We'll back to our mainstream. Maybe we can chat about this uh, uh, game then. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So for those listening at home, we'll be back momentarily.
right. Hey, everybody in chat. Jeffrey, Wayne, Matthew, morning, everybody. Hope you guys are enjoying our dabbling with uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Crimson Blades uh, game. This has been uh, pretty, pretty cool. Interesting little, uh, so, so this one you can find on uh, Drive Through RPG. We're playing the, the, I think it's uh, ver version two, not the D20 version. That's a, it's an interesting mechanic. And we've only seen two of the classes, and we have yet to see any spellcasters, but yeah. Interesting game, most definitely. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, you can also get uh, print versions of uh, these from through Lulu, uh, through the author's uh, Lulu site, too. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, when I finish the video up, I'll include a link down below to that. Uh, just so if anybody does want to follow up with it, they are more than welcome to do so. It's a cool little game. It's like it's only uh, 125 pages, uh, very easy to get to the table pretty quickly. Interesting little twist to it, and the, the hit dice mechanic is really interesting. Uh, it's, and it made, especially for those uh, like the Ogre, to, with DR seems to make low level characters a lot more durable than what I would have expected. And um, definitely made for a, a tense uh, fight, even with uh, first level characters. Sorry, James, I was yapping away to myself here and the folks in chat, but it's an uh, interesting little game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's, you would play as a third? Like, I, I initially thought, like, oh, well, uh, we need a third level character in order to uh, to not have characters die right away. But, like, they seem, especially with the armor, as long as you've got the the um, soul, the warriors up front, it seems like they can handle themselves, even against a, a fairly tough opponent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, DR4 is no joke when you're... I mean, that's why you need heavy weapons to get through that, but... yeah. Well, Heavy weapons and multiple, you know, multiple attacks. So, yeah. Or multiple dice. Or spellcasters. Like I wonder if a, what a sorcerer or whatnot would uh, yeah. would have done on it. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any rules was written in the in this one about uh, critical hits, um, mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to incorporate uh, that into the game too. Like uh, the, having on a six that you reduce the DR by one. Mm -hmm. I think would be enough to, you're not adding flat damage bonus, but you're giving the opportunity for those smaller weapons to find chinks yep. in armor and such. Yep, yep. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what would you, so uh, what I was telling uh, James before is I thought that um, when I initially read the game, I was like, ah, I want to make sure I've got a third level character so you guys can feel competent or whatnot, but I don't yep. know if I would do that. Like, technically, after your first adventure, so like after your hunt with the ogre or the uh, mountain ogre that would be an adventure done so i would let you hit level two yeah hmm. so let's so basically here's what would happen is that uh Calgum would get one extra hit point mm -hmm. and i think that's yeah one hit point not hit dice you'd be 11 max and then rudolph what do you get at level two yeah another hit point as another well hit point as well okay yeah, it's level three is when you get that extra hit dice. So you'd be at eight yeah. hit points. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what, uh, uh, having seen how these two character classes uh, performed, what would be the class you would want to play as a, um, a starting character, do you think? I like the Barbarian. Um, you um, often end up playing uh, kind of like support characters in a lot of stuff, Robert. So it's cool yeah. seeing you play a, yeah. a, like a frontline Fuck yep, off, yep. you know, fuck off sword, big, uh, you know, yep. scary fighter. Yeah. Um, I also, I was looking at sorcerers in this, so, or the, uh, the, the Elric. Um, oh, yeah. Dendrolasi. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, for this game, it's sort of mandatory. Someone's got to play a Dendrolasi because it's such a yeah. <laughs> thematic yeah. element of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I quite fancy uh, that. They're long-lived, decadent race given to amoral pleasures. Yeah. That... <laughs> well, the cool What's thing with them, to love? The, um, <laughs> like, they start off with the ability to summon, like, what you do is 
uh, as you gain level, you start with one, and then as you gain levels, you pick a specific type of demon that you can summon. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. there's rules for summoning that are, are actually pretty, uh, pretty clear. But the neat thing is, depending what you're summoning, you have to often bind them to stuff. So mm -hmm. like elementals have to be bound to an object with a, I can't remember what, what kind of marking it is on it, but it's gotta be something that can withstand their element. Demons, mm -hmm. similarly, you have to bind them to different things, but the stats for the demons depend, uh, when you roll those up, that determines what the modifiers are. So if you summon a combat demon, um, there's a chance of it having a random ability and then its stats will inform what bonuses you get from that. Uh, similarly, mm -hmm. if you bind a uh, elemental into something, like if you bound, uh, one thing I was looking at, if you bound an a fire elemental at first level into your um, weapon, you have a limited number of times you can call on it per day, but you can do things like, you know, shoot a firebolt, you know, or a fire mm -hmm. wraith from it by calling mm -hmm. on the elemental. And like, that's not like it, from a high level, it doesn't look all that different from like just normal spell casting stuff. But thematically, that's super fucking cool that it's, you're picking what kind of thing you want to be summoning and binding and mm -hmm. you're, you know, it, it, and binding it into your armor or your weapon or whatever, you know, what have you. Um, that just feels appropriately, um, you know, uh, more cocky in Swords and Sorcery as opposed to uh, the Swords and Sorcery that we get in a lot of the other games that leans more towards Howard. So yeah. that would be a cool thing. Yeah, like they, the, the Dendrilis, he gain uh, s spells like a sorcerer at a higher level, but I like that they start with a focus on your demon summoning, or not demon summoning, but undead mm -hmm. demon or mm -hmm. elemental summoning. Yeah. I do like me a good demon. Yep. Yeah, I think I would probably stick Barbarian, but uh, yeah. That's so cool. Dendro, yeah, Dendro. Yeah, like you said, it's like it, sometimes it's nice just to, I mean, you still have to think a little bit, but. Uh, <laughs> it's one of my uh, memories of the a game, my favorite game when I was a kid was uh, what called Dragon Quest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what it had was uh, the uh, first and second editions had excellent uh, demons and. Mm. Demon Lords and all the rest of it. It, it. The third edition suddenly got rid of them. Uh, it was all around the D and D panic yeah. thing. But up until then, they had fantastic Demon Lords and everything that you could summon and bind. And well, that's what you can do in this as well. Is like as you get more powerful, because it's a ten level spread for the character classes. At a higher level, the summoners uh, gain access to Lich Lords and Demon Lords and Elemental Lords. And with the mm -hmm. Elementals, the more Elementals you bind, the more chance you have of drawing the attention of the Elemental Lords. Mm -hmm. uh, the Demon Lords have stats. The Elemental Lords do not because they are forces of nature that can fucking destroy you. Which, nice. again, feels kind of appropriate for the setting. Um, yeah. The uh, I loved the, like, the minions worked really well in this. Very like the very light rules. Uh, night, yeah. I, I think I would probably host. I mean, as you would with a lot of these uh, things, uh, old school games. Is I would I think I would codify a couple of house rules just to flesh out a couple of clear options. I yeah. like like it's you can for sure. You can also defend. Actually, there's a we didn't um, get into this, but there is a defense action in it as well, hmm. where if you don't attack and you uh, and you don't use any of your hit dice for attacks. Um. You gain plus one to your DC. Hmm. Uh, and then... Spears and pole arms can attack from the second rank of fighters. Uh, negotiation diplomacy is something expressly called out. So if you happen to have a decent uh, charisma, you can't shit talk you know, your way around some things. Mm -hmm. um, and backstabbing always gets a plus one to hit. Yeah. It says, backstabbing attacking a prone target, plus one to hit. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I think the, it's an interesting, it's an, it's not a dice pool game, but if it's, it's definitely feels like it, it shares some commonalities with that, mm -hmm. right? Um, yep. Fighters is neat. Fighters get um, an extra, they, they specialize in a weapon and they get an extra hit dice with it, right, from first level, which feels like a, a big, you know, um, seeing how the hit dice can play out. The rage in this is pretty good as well. Uh, I like that you're yeah. not penalized afterwards, and it's a neat way of uh, modeling with that extra hit dice. Yeah, and I like the. Um, no, I agree, and I think I, I, you know, I like kind of the variable time behind it. Plus, I didn't have to worry too much about you know someone going berserk and attacking Rudolph because, at least at first level, you're probably not going to be berserk the whole time. 
So our rain came up on yeah. time. So, yeah. I liked how easy it was to improvise stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, like being able to, to the, the idea that the core mechanic is like setting a difficulty that someone else needs to beat. That's a pretty mm -hmm. cool way of, uh, and adding the extra hit dice in for, um, for assistance, almost like an advantage in, in D and D mm -hmm. that's also mm -hmm. a very fucking cool thing. You can picture how, like, uh, if you've got more, you know, hirelings or whatnot, you're all piling in, trying to push this ogre over. There's a better chance mm -hmm. of you getting the success. Um, I like that quite a bit. And then if you have a yep. strength modifier, it really makes those modifiers matter because a plus one or a plus two really seems to make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the damage reduction thing is always really important for the fighter stuff. Definitely. Because you know, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, that was always my thing with um, some of the old school games that, you know, got OSC and it's beautiful. It's beautifully done. It's top tier, but, you know, at low levels, you're so utterly mm -hmm. flimsy you yeah. know as a fighter because there's no D, uh, dr you just get yeah. you know a couple of unlucky rolls and you're you're gone <laughs> i really like how this models the um like i i uh D, D has you know since the 80s has found at times has dabbled with the idea of adding dr to the game and i just don't think it really because the game wasn't built ground up for it it's always a weird mix um, mm -hmm. I like the way they incorporated in Hyperborea or in um, Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerer's Hyperborea, depending on what edition you're playing. Um, this I like even though, like again because it's a built in a very different way. This is fucking great. Like I love the idea that if you want to, you know, pile on a bunch of plate mail, you're going to have that DR8, um, but you're going to be easier to hit. So the likelihood of you getting tagged by a heavy weapon is is higher. Uh, and I uh, love that art that uh, sorcerers, if because they got magic missile at first level, if you are lucky enough to have it in your grimoire, um, goes cuts right through it. And and the environmental factors like the fire and whatnot, same thing too. Like it cuts right through the armor. That's pretty fucking cool. It allows you to have your mm -hmm. cake and eat it too. And I like that the monsters incorporate it because I, when I have tried to incorporate it in D and D, it just has been a weird fit, and it made the characters feel like chumps. But this, it was neat seeing you come up with a strategy to try and get, you know, maximize damage from it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, and yep. then you can imagine how it would, uh, especially with the classes that have more of the chatty, chatty stuff, like the Grio and the um, Mountebank, uh, being able to, like, how that would flesh out some of the role-playing parts of the, of the game as well. You could have uh, a whole part of that. Uh, mechanically uh, in the game, in addition to just, you know, whatever normal role-playing you'd have playing a role-playing game. So, mm -hmm. cool stuff. Um, yeah, so, like, what closing thoughts on it, guys? I play it again. Yeah, no, it's fun. That, that, to be yeah. honest, this must be one of the first, you know, semi-old-school games I've played in. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> nice! Yeah. Full st well, almost full stop, not, you know, from everything yeah. I've played really since I came back has been fairly modern or yeah. <laughs> things like BRP, which are so different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's, to be honest, like, because we've been like, we CNC is a, is a, um, old school game, but I mean, it's, it's, it is a game that it takes advantage of modern mechanics and incorporates some new modern mechanics in it. So I don't really count it as an OSR. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. Because game. I have played that of course, but yeah. it didn't feel, it didn't feel old, you know, no, that one feels uh, this old school D and D feel to it at all. It felt yeah. quite a modern game. But this, it feels like the thing that that felt fun about this. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a fun fucking session, and I enjoy playing with you guys all the time. But mm -hmm. the um, <laughs> seeing how exciting each of those dice rolls were was really fucking cool. Like it was, yeah. you can it's it's that sort of you know sit around with some scratch paper and a, and a handful of d sixes, and you're just you know having a really good fun tactical you know there, there's a game that's there beyond just roll a d6 and fill in do all the heavy lifting with narrative there were uh, meaningful decisions you guys were making over the game mechanics and how how you were proceeding with things even just down mm -hmm. to the selection of what weapon like when uh robert you decided like fuck it i'm gonna cast this thing aside and get my weapons out instead yeah that was uh, yeah. a cool thing so yeah yeah oh, very good very good yeah good game yeah. well done uh oh, side mean. session though uh, yeah. Simon and I gotta say I, I the, uh, the the house rules for astonishing fortune was pretty fun to watch you guys make those rolls yeah. I, and that was a, I wouldn't use it for every game because uh, you know part part of the fun is calculating the use of narrative metacurrency but the risk reward element of this I think is would be a lot of fun to see 
in long-term yeah. play. It gives you a little bit of extra stuff, but you risk losing it with any perch, any uh, expenditure. Yeah. Now, oh, I, okay. I'd like, I like the way, because I've not used it that way before, but I quite like the fact that you, well, I like the Pathfinder way that we use, and that's fun, because that yeah. makes it yeah. all very high, you know, lots of action, and you just keep working the points. But this one, at least it's not, you know, one and it's gone. Because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I really like Blackbirds, but the thing that puts me off slightly is you've got that one fate point, and it's so... You have to guard, look after it like a little treasure because you need it in case you're going to get killed because it's so lethal. And then if you lose it as well, you're not even going to get it back next session, let alone mm. next season. Yeah, you got to flip and see if, yeah. You could be not getting it for two, three sessions. Um, and this makes, you know, you're willing to try a bit harder. You'll take a few more risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think, uh, like I haven't decided how I'd, uh, I, I, I thought for a moment, um, of like, oh, when you get more fate dice, you will, you know, you'll uh, roll uh, more. And uh, I, one thing I, I, um, I thought initially when I wrote them, it was uh, half a level rounding up plus one. And then I was like, mm -hmm. ah, that might be too powerful. But I, I don't know now. I mean, like, mm -hmm. because if you track the chance of losing it with how many times you've called on fate, then by the end of, even if you had two or three uh, points of Astonishing Fortune, you, at, by the end, you're going to be rolling sixes, so you're pretty much going to be losing them all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. So it gives you both the risk reward stuff, and that's exciting. Of of uh, maybe holding on to that, and when you are down to that last chance, if you roll that six and you're like, ah, I keep it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty cool thing. I like the um, recovery too. The like, you know, feed yeah. him some booze, and you will be at half hit points again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cool it's thing. Fun. Yeah, cool. I was just. I was just reading a little bit of the Barbarians of Lemuria thing, too, uh, in, in our break, and they, they have a cool mechanic there, at least in the newer version, where if you if you want to go up a level, you have to describe how you blew all of your money and treasures, uh, you know, like <laughs> booze and women and whatnot. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically like you start each level with nothing. <laughs> The uh, the only I, it looked really interesting as well too, and I, I hear it's just a ton, a ton of fun to play. Uh, yeah. The the reason partly because I'm reading that Elric comic right now, um, yeah. the, so that was in, and for those listening at home, what I'm talking about is Titan Comics, uh, which is a, I think a French publisher has this Elric comic that just came out that is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking of that in part, and also the the whole like rolling a bunch of d6s and rolling dice pools for it. It just seems really that's a really interesting and unique. This game is from 2014 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, like it's not this is not something that's following the coattails of the the, the year zero or those uh, uh, Friel Lagan uh, games. This is a game that was thinking of something completely different on its own, which is. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, very good. Uh, well, you've convinced me. I've uh, I've already queued up that uh, Elric oh, one nice. Kindle. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll pop that after the thing, and then that can get me uh, looking at this again afterwards. So. Excellent. <laughs> Any closing thoughts on Crimson Blades, guys? Yeah. Uh, fun. Yeah. Like Moves I said, quick. I'd love to play it again. Nice. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, so for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for our impromptu session of uh, the Crimson Blades Dark Fantasy RPG, as is always the case. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the game we played or uh, uh, the characters of the session, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, in addition, uh, there's a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server. Uh, while we do not have a channel dedicated to Crimson Blades there, um, we do have channels dedicated to every other game we run on the channel and an Assorted Games channel where we could probably talk about this one uh, and a bunch of other stuff. There's a, a terrific community that has built up over there, and you are more than welcome to join us over there. Uh, there's also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America. Uh, not only do they have an amazing selection of new role-playing games, board games, and card games, they have an unparalleled uh, selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs. And if they don't have in what you're looking for, you can often put it on a want list, and they will send you an email when uh, it comes in. The uh, mm -hmm. If you purchase $10 or more through their website, uh, be sure to enter the code THEMUSE at checkout, all caps, all one word, and you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. 
Uh, there's also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really terrific organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries at the time of recording. Uh, all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it comes to the channel or any other middleman. just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And it's a very small way of saying thank you. For every $25 Canadian that you donate, you'll get one chance to win the grand prize or one of the other great prizes in our next charity raffle, which will be at the end of the month. Uh, grand prize is a copy of this right here, the Beetle and Grimm's uh, uh, Platinum Edition Spelljammer Adventures in Space. That is my copy there, but we have a brand new copy still in uh, the shipping uh, that the grand prize winner will win. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's just got a ton of great, great material in it. Um, and uh, if you don't win that, there still are a ton of other great prizes you can win, including a chainmail dice bag made by our resident armorsmith, Dave. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in the Dungeon Musings Rub Bubble Shop, and there's a bunch of other cool gaming stuff sitting in my guest room that we'll be giving away as prizes as well. So tons of great prizes, and uh, best of all, all of it goes to help out some kids who could really use some help. Last thing I will say is a huge thank you to Robert and James. Guys, thanks so much for, for giving us a try today. That was, um, yeah. you know, I'm so glad. I, I When I woke up this morning, uh, I, I before I got up, I was feeling a little headachy, and I'm like, I don't know about the session. I am so glad we got up and played, because this is a really fucking fun game. Really yeah. cool. It's very good. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. Thanks. Then, uh, okay. for those listening at home, we'll be back with The Witcher in uh, two weeks' time. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our Crimson Blade heroes uh, have encountered. That troll was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> that was a really fun <laughs> fight. Uh, and until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.